Hello and welcome to Crusading Through Part 3. I'm Jim. And I'm Sam. And today we're talking about uh, the Emperor and the Hanged Man arc. Yes. Also known as chapters of 27 there you go. through 32, I believe. Yes, you are correct. Sorry, my cat. Oh, this is a funny story. <laughs> uh, my cat's sitting on my lap and her ear actually refresh refreshed the page. That's pretty her, cool. Her ear touching the screen refreshed the page, so I couldn't look up the number. Yeah. So. Uh, hilarious. Oh, now she is causing ruckus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Um, Did your cat get to mess up anything else? <laughs> I hope so. We're not I even on best does. set yet. Come on. <laughs> so, yeah, we're yeah, doing so... one, part one to six of Emperor and the Hangman, and it's pretty good. It is pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> Before uh, just we talk about this one, there was at least one, I have at least one comment that I would like to <laughs> read this uh, 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 now. Okay. Um, so, uh, Grayfruit, one of our listeners, uh, he brought to my attention that I have been misspelling Kakyoin's name <laughs> in every thumbnail that How I have written his name in. <laughs> so, I, uh, I'm just saying, please shame me. Shame me for this silly mistake. <laughs> See, uh, I mispronounce stuff, and you have to actually misspell everything. So yeah. that's, how, that's, how, that's how we even out. <laughs> and the funny part was, when I saw the comment, I was like, okay, I can just go back and fix them. And then I noticed it is exclusively in the thumbnails so i can't fix them because <laughs> then i have to redo the whole thumbnail and we, this I don't we do like it live doing that. we do it live so i don't like doing that <laughs> what's so let's actually talk about the chapter now um sure sure so yeah so, we, so we're going to india and i love how the first thing joseph think of is just the, like how terrible it is like he immediately thinks of beggar, thieves, curry, and disease. I think curry is like the weirdest thing to come in between everything. Uh, I f- honestly, I'm, I'm, I don't think it's that crazy. I feel like curry is like a big stereotype. I know, but it's, but it's all like negative things, and then curry, or like cur- is like curry eating people. I guess. Yeah, he says curry eating disease ridden people. <laughs> oh, uh, so then um, not Polnareff. Uh, Avdol is like, aha, oh, those rumors are all false. Like, <laughs> India is actually full of wonderful people. And then the next Doubt. two page spread is like <laughs> m- pretty much my worst nightmare, just being like swarmed so, by hundreds of people being the attention of so many people it's like honestly like that like my worst name i wrote in my notes man on scooter with eggs yes i, <laughs> I also just, noticed that and I thought i keep my eyes off of him. strange uh because like, uh, you know that that has to be something that iraqi saw or saw a picture of and he was just like i need to in- include this in my manga <laughs> just one of those weird images you see on the internet or like in his case he probably like saw like in like a book like a tourist book or something yeah i'm not sure how much because like Pretty famously, Rocky went on a um, cross uh, America trip when he was uh, researching for a crusade. Uh, part, part seven. So mm-hmm. I don't know if he went on a a similar trip for part three. I mean, it would probably be less likely because, like, if you think about a Rocky when he was like just starting part three compared to part seven, I feel like he probably had a lot more clout to be able to just be like, okay, I'm gonna go on this like really big trip and for research purposes. I don't know. I have, to, I have to look too far into like the details, like all the settings, or if he like went to a couple. He probably definitely went to Egypt at some point, but yes, like the I'm, other one. I'm pretty ones, sure we know he has been to Egypt. Yeah, the other one too. He probably was like a fan, just like reading a lot, a lot of books about like other areas, like Singapore and like this kind of big. Yeah, Hong Kong. Yeah, the big spot that would be on this trip or like on the pathway, so he like you know had to make it so they go there so he can talk about it. So also like he also I said a bunch of ugly civilians as well in that crowd which I I always keep yeah. track of. It's so I wanted to kind people. of bring up I wanted to kind of bring this up. Uh, is this racist? <laughs> I I'm leaning to more towards yes. It is kind of racist. <laughs> it's a bit, but India like from what I've seen like footage in India, there's like it's probably is that bad. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've seen, um, I don't want to say, make it sound like I've, I'm the authority on India, but I've seen a few, like, television programs. Uh, I think they might have been in, like, Calcutta, specifically. <laughs> is it okay that they had a character saying that India is great, even though he's not from India? <laughs> <laughs> like... uh, I think it is really funny to have uh, Avdol's perspective here. But he also, also said... Also, it's really was... weird, uh, yeah. like, the contrast between him now being all happy and then him being a corpse in a few minutes. <laughs> 
Okay, that's kind of drastic. Uh, you know, to mention there's two million homeless people in India. At the, I guess at the time of he wrote. I believe it. he said just in Calcutta. I believe he said there is in oh my god eleven million in Calcutta. I two wrote, million are homeless. That is an incredible it's, percentage. In like the 19th century, it was voted worst place to live. Which is okay, like, I, think funny. I think <laughs> I don't think it was voted worst place to live. Or I think like, the, the I... British referred to it as yeah, that's one right. of the worst I'm places. Sorry. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> the, the poll, yeah, the the Royal British Empire made a poll and everyone got to vote. <laughs> it was a unanimous vote. <laughs> but uh, uh, we we also do get a, a little like common Iraqiism where it's y- like a the treat the yeah the um chai the special chai uh, chai tea. chai coffee or chai tea wherever it's supposed to be. Chai is tea. The word yes. chai literally means tea. Yeah, it just looked like it was like the picture was like it like foaming like out of like the fucking cup. It looks like gruel. The way he drew it, it, does. it looks like gruel. It doesn't it like it looks like a porridge or rice. Like it does not look like a tea drink. They said it was like uh, cooked with red tea, milk, sugar, and ginger. Like the main things of it. That's maybe very interesting. maybe whenever you do your cooking series, we'll make will make that too. Red tea. I can't imagine what red tea is. It's something I'm familiar with. <laughs> Like, I, like when I I'm think of red tea, like I think red of hibiscus. Bean. I think of like red bean kind of thing. Yeah, and I think these are very different. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, that's what I'm getting like like they made it out of some kind of bean, which I'm like, ugh, if I if they did it that way. Uh, that's what my head goes to, unless you're gonna Google it. In English, red tea normally refers to ribose tea. Red tea also may refer to black tea. Oh, why? Okay. <laughs> okay, why did I say black tea? So it's just like a certain type of tea. I've never had ribose tea before, so. Interesting. Um, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> also, okay, sorry. If, before we what? completely leave this tangent in the dust forever, uh, Wikipedia says black tea, which is referred to in Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese, and other Asian languages as red tea. Okay. So it could be black tea. He's meaning here, but those are very drastic, co- different colors they have there. They are, but I'm going to talk about the other gross, disgusting part of this chapter. What, the famous pig toilet that people show no context images or anime scenes? It's like this one. Yeah, it's really fucking disgusting. I really fucking hate this. Also, another thing, uh, I, I can just assume a like a Rocky heard like a horror story in a book from like a traveling of this incident. <laughs> it just yeah. sounds like a horror story someone wrote in a book and like a Rocky like found and like, yeah, this would be funny to put in my uh, manga. <laughs> this horrifying disgusting thing is a riot a laugh riot if you this, will this pig that looks like like a civilian in in the background like you're just eating your shit literal i i do find it funny like oh it'd be nice courtesy to like have it eat like your butthole clean like a bidet but better <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but less electronic but. Yeah, the the one guy's reaction is just, like, crazy when he's like, <laughs> I don't know why they even showed, like, him, like, literally, like, stabbing it with, like, the pole. Like, yeah, <laughs> kind of cruel, but, I mean, you're, it's like, what is it, like, only, like, only, like, a small percentage of restaurants in the area have this kind of toilet or something, and it's, like, the weird-shaped <clears throat> toilet. Yeah, I, and I, I think he was referring to the shape of the toilet, but... And not the uh, not the, the fact that there's a pig under it. The pig flushing. Um, I mean, not really a flush. It was probably just a, a little hole that probably. It's just goes literally down. a hole. Yeah. So this is another thing too that's like, I don't know if it's fair to ask if this is racist or not because it should be like. An <laughs> it's the name of the thing. episode is going to be "Is this racist?" <laughs> um, because like obviously in India to this day there's still like uh, a huge disparity of people. And just like lack of actual toilets, especially flushing toilets. Flushing toilets are <laughs> no like, indoor a plumbing huge rarity. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. This feels really weird. Especially well, the really weird part about it is how like elegant they make the room look, and like the toilet is like spotless. Yeah. I, and then there's just like a pig's head in there. It's people's, really people's impressions like they come from the toilets. Like there's that that one restaurant we went to at a convention like a couple years ago, and it was like the nicest bathroom. And like everybody in our, like our table, like you gotta check out the bathroom. They're super nice. <laughs> I have vivid memories of that bathroom. It was fucking gorgeous. They have a TV above the urinal that you get to watch stuff. <laughs> I was like, oh wow. So like it's good to have a good first impression on your toilet. <laughs> we see Polnair. So here's another funny bit that it like sticks with me. Uh, and you have to, I hope you can consider it the entire chapter, is that Polnareff has to poop this entire time, and he didn't poop. I have so, to ch- poop right now. <laughs> so Polnareff is, uh, he chooses not to poop because the pig's face is there. 
Um, so he's like, I'll hold it until we get to the hotel. We never see them get to the so hotel. So he's holding it in the entire arc. That is very <laughs> good knowledge. I mean, it makes sense how angry he is. Like, Which, I would be angry, too. I mean, this whole fight probably taking place within, like, an hour. So I would say maybe an hour or two. I would uh, say maybe they were driving for, like, ten hours. We don't know. I would say um, an hour at most this whole arc is going through. Yeah, maybe. Okay, let's, so, let's uh, just I go talk quicker. About, well, yeah, I want to talk about the Hangman's first appearance, his, his initial, like, zombie, mummy-like look, and I fucking love it. Yeah, the Hangman is a lot cooler than I remembered. Same. I didn't really care about him too much. Yeah, he had a uh, cool-ass wrist blade, too, like, Assassin's Creed style, which I forgot that. I knew he had, a, like, a, like, a blade, but I forgot it came out, like, out of his wrist. And I'm not sure if you've seen Heritage of the Future. Like, the su- whole horse is super wist hangman is like really cool and yeah, really creepy that. it has like a really creepy like, tone like music like a music pitch to it it's yeah, so the hangman rad. is fucking awesome uh really cool stand really like inventive i love the not to jump ahead but i love the way that he's beat it's really yes. clever this and is, it's really funny because like this is a very big hold... iq chapter yeah. like they actually have to figure like out like slowly not just instantaneous like we got a couple chapters like past few arcs this is one they literally like have to figure out like multiple chapters part through just like benefits off of having a six part fight and something that's also cool about this is the like they know his power going into it like they have like a clue they they because um mirrors. yellow temperance aka rubber soul he <laughs> he told them about mirror so they if they hadn't even had that advantage, uh, <laughs> Polnareff probably just would have fucking died. Yeah. I mean, he would have died, like, if Abdul didn't jump in front of him and, or, like, Kakumi with him there to help him out as well. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. So, the next chapter, like, literally starts with, like, literally naming Jay, him as Jay Guile and Whole Horse, showing Whole Horse and, like, he is the Emperor stand user. I'm like, okay, you're kind of showing that very quick instead of just having that reveal. Yeah. Then the next chapter being it. I thought that was, like, weird. Yeah, it's really weird. Um, Araki is, like, still doing this, actually. Like, yeah. kind of recently in Jojolian, we had a, like, three-page spread. Not spread, but, like, we had three pages dedicated to, like, information about the rock humans that Out of was nowhere. never delivered to us <laughs> in any other way. Like, the only way we could know this information was because he did, like, a plot dump here. Because he's, like, literally killed, like, the, every rock human and appeared like, in the... They, the there's only one character in the Rock Human that they probably could have got this information from, which is Dolomite, and and then they don't do. He doesn't save it for that. Mm-hmm. So, all right, let's get out of part <laughs> part eight talk. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, so yeah, this is like a whole like, huge Polnareff like like character arc thing, and because he wants to go in alone, like this is like the first time the group really butts heads with each other. Yeah, I, not, I totally forgot about this. That wasn't Kakuin not being him, <laughs> being a guy in disguise <laughs> with him. This is, like, the biggest, like, yeah, the biggest fight they've had. Like, Abdul's against him going alone. Doesn't give a shit about, he, they said he doesn't give a shit about Dio and just wants revenge. And just, like, it's just yeah, so it's really cool. weird seeing Jotaro not be, like, a character. Jotaro and Joseph are not characters in this arc at all. It's funny because I was, uh... I looked back because I wanted to see the English dub voice actor for Whole Horse because I remembered it being good. Uh, spoiler alert, I didn't actually like it when I revisited it. But they added a whole like mini scene where like Joseph is running through the streets looking for uh, um, Paul, Paul Nareff after he goes off, which I was like, wow, okay. this is interesting. They just <laughs> decided to inject Joseph into this. I don't know. It's kind of funny. And then, yeah, they call, he calls Abdul a coward because he ran from Dio, but I mean, who wouldn't be running from Dio if you're not, like, immediately attracted to him? Like, you're Yeah, that to... was kind of, uh, <laughs> that was kind of Paul Nareff being a dick. Like, Paul Nareff is, I feel like there is, like, tension between him and uh, Abdul because, like, they fought for the first time, and he even kind of brings it up here. Like, so there's a little bit of a uh, bad blood between them, but it's really sad to see Paul Nareff be, like... Like, I don't know. It's like he's he's falling down a path you don't want him to see because yeah. it ultimately ends up with uh, Abdul dying. Actually, <laughs> quote, <laughs> not really, but for the purpose of this better. discussion um, <laughs> and for his arc here, uh, Abdul 
basically dies. And you, you can't blame him for wanting this like, being this like bloodlusty. Like everybody like knows like oh he really wants revenge for his sister. Like you know that his like his main motivation. Like you think the entire group would just be following him or like keeping like tabs on him like from a distance because they know this is what they're probably luring him out. Like they, they should up say like they're falling into his trap. Like, yeah, and if you see, like, I think another thing to kind of, like, in Paul Nerf's side, every other fight so far has been a 1v1. Yeah. Like, very explicitly be 1v1. So, I think maybe it's, like, him thinking, like, okay, I need to go and deal with this guy. Like, this is my responsibility. I don't want to put anyone else in danger. Yeah. And especially this fight, it's, like, the theme of this one. It just, you can't go in alone when you know you can't win a, win like that. Like, you have to work at the, t- at the team. Like, we are a team. <laughs> Yeah, Even that's really, the first two v one we really get. Mm. Yeah, it's that's another thing that's really a, a good thing to bring up. Yeah, we like. I mean, it would make sense for Dio to be like, all right, maybe one at a time is not the best way to fight a group of five guys. Because yeah, literally this because they don't know it. I guess at this point, these things is going to be a one v one because they don't know anything about like ho- the entire horse being there. Like. Hmm. So they yeah, we get our introduction to whole horse, the man himself, the lad. I couldn't believe he was actually riding an elephant. Did they change this in the manga or in the anime where he's have, riding a, a horse? I can't remember. I, I'm pretty sure he stuck with the elephant and him mm, being uh, the womanizer, like, trying to be a smooth womanizer, and like yeah. he's such a goofball. Like he becomes such a joke by the like, the end of Whole Horse. So it's kind of funny seeing him as like kind of like <laughs> being like more serious. I know he has a whole laughter thing, but he's kind of like taken more seriously here. Yeah, he's. I think he's pretty serious for like the entire arc, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Other than his laugh off. It it is just so funny that he he shows up on an elephant. Like, why? Smooth drifter. (laughs) I think I think the girl, the woman is not like uh, what the neck when the future stand user is like the one that's like hiding inside like this like the attractive woman, but it's not. I Mm, like. Okay, I just I did check. He does come in riding an elephant. Of course, he uh, can't. He has to show up in style. So and he does the famous pose which is the, the gun forming into into his hand and like the fingers are kind of going through the gun a little bit looks like oh which is super cool i, <laughs> I love that so much but it's like i always think of like the 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 robbie rotten remix video where the thumbnail is like him summoning the the, the emperor in his, his hand the, the, the... <laughs> what there's a, i don't know if i've seen that one there's like this image yeah one of the remixes the uh, we are number one remixes i <laughs> and there's this image of like Robbie Rotten like as a cowboy like summoning the emperor into his hand, and I all I can think about <laughs> is like that fucking image, and I crack up. It's uh, like when it's like this ruined because of like remixes. That's really funny. So uh, yeah, they completely yeah. overkill a snake <laughs> too. I wrote. Yeah, this is just like I don't Showing know. Off their I, I don't have anything to say about the scene except it's good and funny, and like I guess we see their powers, but. Like it's it's fine. It's we nice basically to have, like got, a villain intro. We basically know what what Hangman's power is, and and all we know is that the whole horse has a gun. So uh, yeah, uh, and a gun that he, as you said, like uh, is very clearly not real. Like it is very clearly like summoned. <laughs> which is which I'm no, I know it doesn't happen here, but like when the other arc where whole horse appears, there's a really funny gag with that, and I can't wait till we get to that. <laughs> I just uh, love whole yeah. horse. So Horus is really fun. It's yeah. really, it really shocked me how little he actually does. I know in this arc, he's yeah, he's basically done like after he kills Abdul. And uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so we get the the first encounter of him showing up the Polinar, of him and him and Jay Guile. Which do you like Jay Guile? Or do you like Centerfold? Like the actual like censored name for it more. I I think it's really funny that they chose Centerfold because Centerfold is just the name of a song. A, a Jay Guile song, uh, which is a, yeah. probably their biggest their biggest hit. So I don't know. It, it, to name. me, it is hilarious that the guy's name is literally just J. Period Guile. I heard Jay Guile. I think, oh, this guy definitely appeared in part one as like a vampire or like a monster. But, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he is a monster. Like literally, looks like a monster. But we'll he get there. He is really horrifying. I totally forgot about that reveal. Actually, I th- I didn't remember that he he is like actually a hideous monster man. Yeah, I know. I was like, he's way too handsome to be him. It's definitely like this. Definitely has to be like a misdirect. But uh, yeah, so we get guns are greater than swords, and then a great laugh off between him and Whole Horse, pulling off and Whole Horse. So yeah, the bullet yeah, is part it's of the really stand weird. too. 
Oh, sorry, wait. We we didn't talk about the greatest pose. One of my favorite JoJo poses of all time is the uh, whole Which horse. One? Uh, when whole horse first shows up and he's holding the cigarette and he's having the standoff with Polnareff. Uh, he basically has both of his knees, his kneecaps tilted in and down. Uh, it's just mm-hmm. incredible. It's an incredible pose. They did it so much justice in the anime. Uh, gave it plenty of time to shine. Just fucking love this guy. He's such a lord. Uh, so yeah, we learn that the uh, the board is a stand, is part of the stand two, and it's weird like because Ponarf gets saved by Abdul from getting shot, but the bull can like move around, so it's just like. <laughs> There isn't like a straight up like description for pole horses stand other than just a gun that can the bullet can move too, but doesn't have that far of a reach as as a gun should. That is, like, yeah, the, I like the base. I like I that got. he explains. I'm oh, sorry, I just wanted to say, uh, I like that he we kind of get that naturally where when they start running off after after he kills Abdul, um, he does say, ah, I can't reach them. He's too far. And if if it wasn't too far, my my I wouldn't be able to do enough damage. So it just uh kind of goes along with like the stand rule that we got last chapter where it says like the closer that you are to the stand the stronger it is except for exception which i like asterisk which so like you can do whatever it wants yeah i mean it makes sense i think for a gun it makes a lot of sense that it would follow that rule but then you know ponok gets saved by abdul so there's like that the thing where he spits the cigarette down look like like he did spit the cigarette down right like he sits yes he this is a very but he catches it in the air yeah did you see what he does with the cigarette so he spits it down and then he shoots his gun. The bullet hits the cigarette, which not only lights it, but it launches it into the air. And then he catches <laughs> it with his mouth. So Sam, convoluted. Whole horse is a fucking badass. I don't know why you'd expect anything less. <laughs> because I know he's not. He's like an idiot. <laughs> uh, no, but he's bad. He, at least he's good at looking cool. Some ex- sometimes. So we'll see. I think it's <laughs> we'll see incredibly. I think it's incredibly contrived that uh, Abdul is able to. Like, if we think about the situation that's happening, uh, of where, so, Whole Horse shoots his gun, um, Starplot, sorry, <laughs> Silver Chariot, uh, tries to deflect it, but fails, Polnar is, like, oh totally God. helpless, like, he's gonna die, but then Avidal just happened to be, like, running to help save him, like, Avidal would have to have started yeah. running and been, like, literally inches away from him before the bullet was even shot. I just think that's stupid. Yeah, but you're looking like I I missed your flop because of Discord crapping out, so don't worry about that. But, but uh, yeah, that's like, yeah, I'm sorry, Discord like crapping out really threw me off because you know remote doing this remotely is like terrible. I'm back. Yeah, you're good. This is like remote remote recording has its flaws. <laughs> like Discord crapping out, I'm not hearing like half the things either one of us. All right, say. what is the last thing you heard me say? <laughs> What's that? What's the last thing you heard me say? I don't know. You were cutting in and out a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, you, were, you were kind of describing everything. All right. I just described the You're whole still... fight. Let's move on. You're still, there's a lot of cutting out going on right now. The recording is not going great. <laughs> yeah, we're going to literally never use Discord again. It's a fucking trash program. Yeah. What's, what's the conference call thing people are using? Zoom? No, we're not going to use Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Why uh, we're gonna use skype because skype is we're fine skype's fucking fine all right yeah. let's finish this fucking discussion <laughs> let's try and then so, yeah so abdul gets shot in the fucking head and stabbed in the back but he's fine we, he knows there's lots of blood he's fine it's we're yeah just, he just, just leave like, his body there too he, he just dies it's very dramatic i Even, don't remember in the anime maybe they have a scene where like once kakyoin and uh, um, I, uh, would Paul Nareff leave? Then Joseph shows up and like does something to the body. I don't remember. Or like you know maybe like Kakuin like checking a pulse or whatever, and kind of just you know having like a look in his eyes or something to make sure like okay, there's a little tease that he's actually not 100 percent dead yet. And that would also foreshadow Kakuin lo- losing the sight of his eyes. <laughs> that's because that's the sun blocks out the cloud like the cloud blocked the sun so his eyes are just completely dimmed out so that's how you know he gets blinded <laughs> epic foreshadow all right so basically a uh, whole horse becomes irrelevant after this this yeah, bullet enters abdul's head one of my favorite panels is pulling off crying with the thumbs up uh, i really wanted to bring that up yeah that's, that's such one of a... my favorite panels <laughs> it's such a good moment because uh i don't know i think the characters are used really well here like 
Kekioin being like really upset at uh, uh, Polnareff and then seeing that Polnareff actually is full of regret is yes. really powerful. He's not, even though he's he trying to talk shit, saying you got in my way, like trying to do like the badass, like not giving a shit. It, it just shows how like fragile Polnareff actually is. Like he yeah. puts up this like tough guy front. Which, yeah, he... once we get to the actual description of Polnareff, which we get like the little like info thing, it's, it's a very describes that very well. Once we get yeah, there. it was funny to like have that written out because like when you read it, you're like, oh yeah, I guess that is like pretty true. Yeah, and so, it makes him like funny, like it makes him a good com- comedy character. But if you think about actually having to work with this guy, it'd be a big issue. <laughs> work with any of these like weirdos, like <laughs> yeah, it's not great. So Kakarin Kek- says like, it's just a scratch. He's okay. I'm like, there's a lot of, a lot of blood, even though we know it probably was right because it was <laughs> just a scratch for being shot in the head because he got better. <laughs> yeah it's... it's so funny knowing that like adults okay it's fine <laughs> from that they some a little bit yeah. to recover but like maybe like, like a month or like a week couple weeks or so to recover but like yeah let's talk about abdul's death really quick like i think it's really weird so when i say death i mean death in quotes because yeah. he doesn't actually die here uh i think it's really funny that abdul is like brought back at all because this feels like such a definitive death. Did he think his stand was like too like too powerful for what he had in mind? Cause like they even say that the fire stand was like the biggest threat to them all, like in the fight. Mm-hmm. In his analogy of like infantry, like tank versus infantry versus mines, like yeah, <laughs> it's Sorry. just like I mean, there's probably it's probably like a popularity reason where a lot of people liked Abdul and they want to bring him back. But like this is supposed to be a huge lesson for Polnarf where he can't just go in to these things alone it's no matter what he's feeling like he had to put his feelings aside he has to like work together yeah exactly and it, it really is like this um sort of unforeseen consequence like you don't really expect a character in like in, i can't think of any other jojo characters that have existed thus far who have died so early into the part like, like this is chapter 20 sorry wait what, what chapter does he actually die in uh, uh he dies in 29 30. 29 yeah. that's 29 and then yeah they talk about it in 30 so yeah could you imagine like because at this point it's kind of like Avdol is part of the main cast it's pretty clear that the Stardust crusaders are like the main dudes I'm trying to think because Shingek- shingechi and like part four well that hasn't happened yet i was talking about like oh so far that is yeah. like because who who dies quick uh, I guess, I guess <laughs> do you like, count Jonathan's like, dad but he's not like a main character do you he's count like dad. I'm trying to think, Joseph, like one of the the, t- the teachers that Joseph had, like when they they came to like their training ground and like while they're doing like their last like the last test. Yeah. Uh, what is it, Tom Petty? <laughs> yeah, one of wait, them. Wait, no, Tom Petty's a different character. Oh, but well, wait, both of them like one of them like died by like uh, ACDC, I think. Yeah, I don't think that happened so early in the in the part though. It's like halfway through, I think, and like. And this is like barely a third into the part because. Uh, Stardust Crusaders ends up being actually whoa, like 150 chapters. So this is really early on that Paul or that uh Paul Nareff has this big life lesson and Abdul dies. And I think it's really interesting. It actually shows like a enemy stand user being really effective and actually killing someone. It does kind of raise the stakes in a big way where it is it really is like putting the spotlight on Paul Nareff too, like in two ways because obviously this is his fight and it's like this is your responsibility you can't be this irresponsible anymore. Like, you need to work with us or horrible things will happen. These are seriously deadly people that are after us. Like, we have to, like, f- take them out together. Like, there's better <laughs> better chances of survival. Like, like if you are gonna, if you have no chance of living, do not... It doesn't hurt to run away. That's, like, basically what Kagami was, like, trying to tell him what the message was. Mm-hmm. I do, like, and... I, I do like this fight being just, like, all around the side characters, like... Like Joe's like the the Joe starts take a sideline for this part, and I really like that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it really good. <laughs> it, it works really well, I think that uh, we're fleshing out the group because that's my biggest complaint. I think with Stardust Crusaders is like it's a little too much. Not they don't focus enough on the characters. It's yeah. more about like the getting fight. into a fight and then having like the character <laughs> versus another character and like the ideal conflict. But and then Joseph and then uh, Jotaro punching it. <laughs> Yes, basically. very hard. Yes, or very... or um, poking it really hard. Fingering it very hard. Yeah, 
<laughs> fingering it. So, yeah, so one of my favorite things also Kakuin like hits Polnarf with the Emerald Splash, steals a car, and then saves Polnarf. <laughs> Which I thought was yeah. hilarious. So you like man just hit him, steal a car. Also, I love the effect of Emerald Splash of like the waves behind him every time he does it. It I does look super it. cool. It looks great. I love the look of it. But like, uh, I just love, yeah. love the this ridiculous like saving pawn or like technique. <laughs> uh, the one other thing I want to say about this before we move on is how I really like how the fight is so incredibly quick. Yeah, like this isn't kind of a long drawn out like Yellow Temperance. We have a a lot of like like scene transitions and like different standoffs settings. and stuff with this like we get the initial standoff with um paul Nariff and whole horse which is cool and then it instantly it's okay uh, we see how terrifying hanged man is and how it just kills uh, a character and then it's over like they run they run away because they have no chance yes <laughs> it's just then... very like um it feels very urgent. Like yes. we need to act quickly because if you make one misstep, you'll die. That's why they get. In the, I love when they get in the car and everything. Like Pona apologizes, but gets elbow in the face as like the apology. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those like just really funny JoJoisms. Like uh, just how fucking masculine Part Three is. Like showing affection through violence. <laughs> you basically like, you're being a dumbass. That's that's how I accept your apology. But then like the. Uh... Gotta get my notes turned here. I'm gonna hear that crispy page turn. Oh, uh, super crisp. So yeah, we, then we uh yeah we the whole conversation of them and like and like the, I love them getting like just tossing the mirror out like the window like they kind of understanding what's gonna happen so they have to get rid of like every reflection thing but they still had like the side mirrors. That it's impossible. Got... It's like totally impossible. Also, they had like chrome on the steering wheel, which is like yeah, that's how he actually gets them, and that's he like. The hangman is so powerful, he fucking crashes the car. Like, yeah, it's insane. And then we get, like, the... This is where I think this arc is super cool. We get this power taken to, like, its logical, like, most insane point where he's in the reflection of your eyeball. I love that so much. It's a cool thing. I don't know if this is overtly based off of, a like, a horror, quote-unquote, villain or a horror monster, but uh, this whole idea of, of attacking through reflections is like very evocative i feel like it's kind of loosely being like bloody mary where like you're supposed to like look into the mirror and everything and mm-hmm. that, i can that, kind of see that i can see that, that kind of being thing there's also like a lot of horror that of just something you know you being like in like a room or a bathroom and you like look up in the mirror and there's a the ghost <laughs> behind you it's, it's just kind of that kind yeah. of like stereotype the horror the classic stereotype. thing where yeah you turn around and it's not there and then you look back and yes. then it is there in the reflection it's, it's a very horror a horror trope that you just kind of base it off of and I like how they get, like, Araki gets that scene out of the way in, like, the very beginning. Yes. So the rest of it can be, like, more interesting. Like, we see he's in a puddle later. He's in the chrome of the steering wheel. He also just does it, like, ten times and it's still there where, like, other times in horror movies it would just be gone after, like, the second look. Yeah. And it, it honestly, that makes it more suspenseful because you know it's still coming because in horror movies when it goes away you're like okay the the danger is over here to the future i think it does that where it cuts and like it gets closer and closer until it eventually jumps on you and stabs you and then the uh here to the future isn't it like they make it seem like he's in the reflection of the arcade cabinet that you're playing on i think so i'm not like because paul nerf like shoots the sorry not paul nerf uh whole horse like shoots the screen and then it shatters and then he's in like the reflection I would believe that. I have to double check. I haven't like I have to watch the supers again, but yeah, I've never actually played that game. It's fun, broken oh, but I'd fun. Like to. It's I'd like to play. <laughs> Pet Shop is completely fucking broken. It's hilarious. I'm pretty sure Pet Shop is banned in like competitive play. <laughs> Good. So I guess before if we get more into it, the the whole horror and the whole horror, the Polnarf uh, fact sheet. I just wrote some little, oh, yeah. little interesting stuff of like hobbies or any sport. <laughs> His favorite movie is Bad News Bears. It's a pretty good choice. Because sports. Yes, it's, also, it's pretty funny. Uh, favorite woman, it just depends on the mood. His favorite yeah, kind what of a woman. weird question. I think that's <laughs> so, such a weird... Hey, Paul Nair, what's your favorite kind of woman? <laughs> depends. So so you don't have a, you don't have a choice. You don't really like, have like, a specific like, choice or taste. No, it just depends on the day. <laughs> I, it's weird. So, yeah. They, but if, if you talk about the car crashing, but we talk about uh, Kakumi saying there's no such thing as a mirror world. Can, there's no there's no way a mirror world can exist in yeah, this world hilarious. of JoJo. Ha ha. I Cut feel like it's not five. even worth talking about. <laughs> what, what what if some like someone mentioned to Paul Narf in part five saying like hey, man, we fought a guy who had a mirror world and then him like, reacting to it like, really bad. Which I'm surprised yeah. they didn't do. 
But uh, uh, I mean, w- there wouldn't have been time for it. It's such a fucking no like, one off. Like, and I'm sure Rocky did not give a shit that he wrote that one line <laughs> ten years before. <laughs> I know. It just you know the little things. So, so yeah, they end up crashing the car, and then we see he uses a. And this is where Paul Nareff's able to discern how he moves. He yeah, basically they both moves like a little out. laser. It's like a light. It acts like light. Yeah, which makes him like. Light okay, speed. so talk about broken stands. Yeah, the hanged man can move at the speed of light. Yes, but uh, po- but basically, Polnareff would manage to cut him while he was moving at the speed of light. But he couldn't cut a bullet that slightly changed direct trajectory. <laughs> he wasn't ready. Literally for that. moved one inch to the left. He, when he, he was shot. He had to be one hundred percent confident where they're going to, so he can cut him at light speed, not just <laughs> be. He was be tricked. Misdirected. He was caught yeah. by surprise. Being swindled. Uh, there's one panel in particular where. The hangman is, it's just like a close-up of the child's eye that the hangman is in, and it looks really fucking cool. The child, like, in, like, the colored version, looked like Abdul. I'm like, why is this little Abdul child, like, running up to them? <laughs> he has like, the same like, color scheme. Oh, he does? Wow, yeah. Was... And he's he has, like, a head wrapping, too. That's really funny. Everything but the hair, but no one can imitate that hair. Yeah, um... that, that hair takes years and years of training to do. <laughs> uh, this child has barely even grown his hair out for the first time. Yes. Uh, Asian Egyptian hairstyle. <laughs> if you look on hieroglyphics so you would see them obviously on there <laughs> so so yeah. then we have this whole thing where it's like he gets uh, grabbed by the hangman by the neck but then he's like i gotta say a cool line i'm not scared right now <laughs> yeah this is one of these like <laughs> this is uh, end, end of the classic part three JoJo fights. Moment. yeah this favorite end of part three moments where they always this part especially has been like this where they like, you guys say something cool like it's happened <laughs> so many times like, yeah, it's ridiculous. And it's funny they even do it two times in this arc. Like they they have a little callback to it, which is really funny. Because it's always like I guess like Western movies always have to have like, especially like uh Clint Eastwood movies, especially like we all and we obviously know how much he loves Clint Eastwood, especially with Jotaro, where like yeah. he always has to say something cool. But like none of the people in this part know how to say something cool, which I find it hilarious. <laughs> it's literally yeah, just stating your name. Goopers. <laughs> you just state your name. <laughs> that's your that's your one liner. Uh, but my favorite thing, he just kicks dirt in a kid's face. But I gotta respect that. <laughs> uh, I mean, he took the most non-violent solution there because the hanged man is or uh, Jake Isle keeps saying like, "Oh, you're gonna have to destroy this child's eye if you want to kill sand. me." Yeah, and he just pockets sand on him. It's also, one. so yeah, what happens is so he jumps into Polnareff's eye, and Polnareff is able to at the speed of light cut him. <laughs> Uh, and, and unless then, he like held held the sword up to where his eye is, so when he like jumped, he was like just go right through it or something, or hit yeah. It. But I th- here's the thing that I think is like the like I don't know why Polnareff didn't just immediately close his eyes, because then uh, wouldn't he be trapped in in his eyeball? I don't know. Because I mean, then he I, wouldn't be able to. <laughs> I would love the image of just like him closing his eyes the entire time, and Cagman have to like hold his hand to like <laughs> where the guy is. I would have loved that. I honestly thought that's how the art concluded. I thought that they like. <laughs> Because I forgot, I forgot about the coin trick at the end, which is awesome. I, that's the one thing I remembered the most was that the coin. Like I knew it ended with a coin trick. I just remembered the. Uh, uh, I remembered like the car scene the most uh, from the anime, at least. But so then we have a a fake out. We have a they they hear a man scream and um, <laughs> we go over to it and we see a, a a man who looks kind of like the man that we saw early in the, yeah. the chapter. The funny thing, I was like, this guy's not ugly enough. He's way too handsome to be a villain of this part. Like, there's no way this is him. And that was like, 100% right. <laughs> and then, like, yeah, like, we see... like, I don't remember him being the serial killer. Like, uh, <laughs> the serial killer, this rapist serial killer is not this ha- like decent looking of a man. Like, I remember <laughs> him looking like a monster. And then I was right. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, we get the reveal that, oh, actually, Paul Nairf let his guard down. He should have closed his eyes instead of letting knife... Jay Guy leave his eyes. He got a knife thrown in his back. <laughs> <laughs> which is hilarious yeah, and then we see how horrifying jay guile is like a deformed potato like well, he, a mutant potato yes. he stupidly revealed himself he has like no like eyes like his eyes are just pure like white like milky white yeah this was a really stupid moment i think yeah. that he reveals himself not like, a great plan <laughs> he, he did have a plan but he's so quickly like it was so quickly like seen through he should have predicted that he should have it was not a great plan just like mostly like he's not like diva who had to be like attacked to get his stand to activate no he like has to be like meet like a medium to long range away but his stand still gets hurt by him or he still gets hurt by his stand from being that far away Mm -hmm. but it wasn't a great plan because he gets immediately like wrecked when he tries to sick the mob on him and (laughs) yeah so that's a really fun i love that whole thing where 
um, he's like, hey, those guys have money, and then they start going crazy. Uh, and then... Um, he wasn't aware of the culture of, like, literally one coin can make the entire mob, like, under their, under their control, essentially. Yeah, this is another one of these moments that feels a little racist, but I don't know. <laughs> a, a fight solved by racism. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, like, it's really weird to me, too, how, like, we're very clearly, like, in a barren wasteland, uh, and then just, like... All these people just appear out of nowhere. It's almost <laughs> like they come out of the ground. It's like it's like the news team assemble uh, from, Anchorman. <laughs> from Anchorman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like you just yell money in India and they'll just get sick by a mob. It's good to know. <laughs> so yeah, but I'm glad I the love one the, uh... the one man that liked India in the group. It's just dead now. <laughs> so now yeah. they're just stuck and they all hate it. <laughs> That's what you get for like in India, Abdul. You fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a never released episode it's like <laughs> just... it's horrible <laughs> i was really dreading talking about this because i was like there's a lot of stuff in this in this uh chapter that does make me uncomfortable about like the depictions of india and um but yeah i, I went for someone to comment and be like uh, actually a rocky actually really did hate india and like everything <laughs> he read about it like you're, his racism is just. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> How dare you? How dare Rocky be the so secret? Cruel? The secret trivia of Rocky was actually a racist towards the Indian culture. <laughs> Indian I mean, culture. it kind of comes across that way in this chapter. This is why no, no Indian characters appeared in JoJo since. We really don't see a single character that is like a reasonable, normal person. They're all beggars, or in, literally, like they all look insane. Even like the helpful ones, like Polnareff asks the uh, the one guy, he's like, "Hey, have you seen a two man, a two two armed man around?" And At least he actually he, pointed to them. He did, but he still looked like he was about to die. <laughs> Just a homeless person, one of the two million homeless people in that city. Oof. Yeah. Whatever. I don't want to keep talking about this. So, um, I mean, we just so, ends with like with him being sliced in half and being turned to a pin cushion, essentially, and like being de- literally destroyed. <laughs> yeah it's really it's really cool i lo- I just love the uh the way that they uh kakyoin thinks to solve it and it's kind of like to to really put a pin on it kakyoin <laughs> is <laughs> turned to a pin cushion that's funny yeah kakyoin is the one that saves palmera for the end here and it, it goes back into the like you can't um <laughs> you can't, can't end always it on... solve your own problems i mean that you can't end it on that kind of a one-liner you gotta say like this so I have a question for you because this is like a common topic when people discuss this arc. Is do you think this came way too early for Polnareff? Like getting uh, revenge in? Like we're not even like that far into. Yeah, like, as we we already like, talked about, we're not even like we're barely a third into the manga. I think we're like halfway through the like before Egypt part. I uh, think I'm not sure. We're, we're, I think we're, we're right around that point. But I do you think, think... The, the Egypt part is is a majority of this manga. Which, uh, they're longer fights, definitely. Um, so, okay, uh, I'll answer your question. Do I think it came too soon? Him getting his um, revenge or him just kind of, like, yeah, it's this whole thing, getting getting the revenge really early. Uh, I want to say no. I don't think it's, like, I don't think there's, like, any inherent value to just like making it later in the part like i don't see how it would change the way that the because like we don't really the only time we got any backstory on it uh or like any interest from paul Nareff was in the introduction arc with him yeah when you get the flesh uh, blood taken out and kind of like, talking about his story so but we've also had the most we, we spent almost the most time with him uh compared to like abdul yeah. Uh, and compared to Kakyoin, actually, they might be kind of tied. But so we have his introduction arc. We have him uh, fighting. fighting um, what's his face? Uh, the devil, Devo. Yeah, we have him fighting Devo. And then, actually, wait, yeah, and then it's just this arc. Maybe yeah. he doesn't have enough, actually. I thought there was another one. Uh, I guess I'm wrong. Like, I kind of thought, like, you know, those whole horse and hangman could have been, like, that you're left alive or something. So they, they come back as, like, constant thorns, like. I don't know. It felt like, like at the imagine him fighting like in Dio's Dio's mansion like, against instead of Van- Vanilla Ice, it's like him having his showdown with with Hangman there, and then like you know the other other guy, everyone else can like fight like you know uh, Vanilla Ice and stuff. But like I felt like it felt like his end game fight, his end game like mini boss towards before Dio. 
So here's my, like, justification, I guess, for it. So basically, this is kind of like the uh, justification for why Paul Nareff is in the group. Like, we get him, like, I guess maybe in Iraqi's mind, uh, it, it made more sense to develop this side character. Because he's, he's basically, a, like, a side character. Yeah. Uh, he's not really, at least at this point, um, he's just kind of, like, one of the Crusaders. He's not, like, Jotaro, who yeah. is the main character. Uh, so I think giving him, like, this focus and letting him, like, achieve his goal, uh, not only lets him focus on Dio later, but it also, it feels like we have grown with him and, like, we've seen him grow as a character. Yeah. I mean, it's mad, like, him, like, fighting, like, Enya and, like, you know, him, like, you know, her dying and saying, like, my son is going to get you or something like that, just, like, kind of work his way up there, maybe. I don't know. I just felt like it's such an important character for a Polnarf. It, it kind of, like, what happened with, Limp Biscuit and Hermes, where like it felt like it kind of happened. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, like soon, like sooner than you th- expect it to happen. Like, yeah, I, I, I kind of understand, but at the same time, like I don't like. like not, okay, I, so I, I what don't if... hate it. Like I, don't, I like it. I'm just saying it, it could have been done differently. I think it definitely could have been, but I, I don't know. Like I think it's, I think it's fine how it is. It's very clearly like not the focus of yeah. the part. Uh, and it's a way to have kind of like a big milestone early on too, because like if you think about the last arc, like all right, um, Rubber Soul was like just another fight. Uh, <laughs> the Devil was just another fight. Uh, Strength was also just like another fight, even though it was unconventional. <laughs> this one, it's like a character, uh, a very very important like um, character moment. And a lot character of these fights have been minor inconveniences on their journeys, where this one is literally like a big one. <laughs> I think it makes more sense to have this arc here and then give Paul Nareff that character development than to just not, to try and give him a chapter with character development and Abdul dies and then to not have his, like, big side quest yeah. tied up. I don't know. This is also, like, a very blunt one where they literally just come up right away and just say, like, we're fighting now. <laughs> not like Diva who had to do that just to activate a stand. This one is like, we're here, we're gonna fight, we know about you, <laughs> you know about one of us, you don't know about me. We're gonna do this. It kind of like, kind of remind me like, I guess it kind of mirrors like what uh, what Polnarf did in his fight, where like once they found out he was a stand user, he's like one v one me, bro. Mhm. Where this one's like two v one me, bro. It's gonna be fair. Yeah. Trust me. Uh, I do have one of one last thing to say about this that I've never seen anyone bring up before. Go ahead. Uh, it's kind of cool that Polnarf and Kakyoin get to team up. Because... Yes, that's as I said earlier. Like, I love that this part is like not doesn't have the Joe stars in it. It's like a little Joe Bros teaming up to fight like. A villain yeah. or villains alone. I love These that. are also the two characters that were mind controlled by Dio. So yes. having those two of them together beat this like very significant boss, I think is is pretty cool and clever. A, a mercenary and a uh and a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> like it's very interesting. It's just, you remember like remember when Whole Horse was supposed to join the Crusaders and it's always still kinda weird to me, like reading back to this, like he legit killed abdul and like he was gonna replace him i guessing like from what i've heard i don't know i i'm trying to and there is art of there is art of a pole horse like with them yeah whenever i'm I'm very sick and tired of uh, people saying like like oh a rocky thought of doing this it's like okay give me like a quote uh or give me an actual like line from a rocky and then we can take it from there at least this one actually had art though yeah i've heard this too of like so there was this idea that um, Whole Horse would take over. He would replace Abdul. I don't know how, when he was considering this. Yeah. Um, maybe he was considering it, like, at a time before the art came out. Because I think it would be completely impossible for him to think that he could have a Whole Horse kill one of the Crusaders and then have him join. So the first side character. Like, the first side character to yeah. join. Like, literally the first, one of the first stands we see is... Is Abdul's. Yeah, like, literally, yes. Like, uh, so it, I think it, it is interesting. You probably couldn't, yeah, you probably couldn't think of a good way to like really like find a way to get him to join the group. <laughs> Unless yeah. he's like so scared of Dio, but we haven't gotten to that part where he, he talks to Dio. Uh, I'm sure that um, someone in the comments will have a very nice little uh, uh, dissertation or quote or, or whatever. Uh, um, just, just figure your opinion on what you like of like how you think about the whole phone out getting his revenge and i'm curious so of me <laughs> no, just, just just anyone anyone's oh. like 
No, no, you already said your shit. <laughs> I was gonna Get say, yeah, why, why would I say it again? <laughs> Discord didn't cut that out. You're good. <laughs> so, all right, anything else you want to talk about? Very good. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I really just, like, uh, unfocused in this discussion. I'm sorry. No, you're uh, good. <laughs> this is, this Discord crapped out a lot in this one, so, like, a lot of stuff. Any, any like, weird, like, silent moments have happened in this, and it's cut of that. We couldn't I'll hear each other, I'll try and fix probably. it. Yeah. Um, this, as much as I can. Recording remotely had to, had its bugs, so. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I like this arc a lot. I think it's really good. I think... This is the um, longest fight so far. This was a very emotional moment, I think, in early JoJo. Like, uh, it's definitely not one of the highest ones, because, like, I think... If we're going by what is already what is out by the time this chapter comes out, I think like the Caesar, um, the C- Caesar um, final ripple scene is probably, I think, a lot more significant than this because Caesar is like a character that we follow through almost the entirety of that part. Does this rank the highest yet for part three so far, though? From what we probably read? yeah, because I, I feel like there hasn't really been like a big gut punch. Yeah. Yet. This is like uh, the stakes are our stakes. These, none of these characters are safe, kind of thing, until you realize that death is. <laughs> not a thing that can happen until the end of this part <laughs> <laughs> yeah and that kind of like codifies the jojo trope almost like yeah uh where you can only die if it's the last like 20 chapters <laughs> unless unless you have a healer on you mm-hmm. but but yeah so i think i i, I think hangman's probably my favorite design stand he looks awesome he it does looks look so rad. fucking cool it's red it's probably yeah it's probably my favorite kind of thing going really underrated i feel like no one ever talks about hanged man for like cool stands but he's incredibly powerful i'd rather um, have him than man cool. the mirror yeah man the mirror is like a it's it, it's way harder to utilize i think whereas hanged do people, man is... do people do like fights of who would win between like man the mirror and and hangman it sounds stupid <laughs> anyway, do you think someone probably fucking did that i'm video. sure someone has uh i feel like I don't know. I'm, I think the man in the mirror is just like so OP. Like he can separate you from your stand. Like yeah, but there's no such thing as a stand. At the, but but what's it called? J God doesn't go into the mirror. He sends a stand into the mirror. He can like see through his stand, so like he can be as far away as he wants. And does being in the mirror translate into being in the the uh, the mirror world? That doesn't probably not. Exist. Because <laughs> if you think about Jay Gail, he he's physically existing in the reflected object. So. He's either in the eyeball or he's in the uh, the chrome of the steering wheel. So, <laughs> I mean, I feel like Man in the, Man in the Mirror is so OP, it just separates you. Because, yeah, like, that's the... Uh, so I, I feel like I have to say this, otherwise we will get comments about it. Um, everyone's always like, oh my god, Rocky forgot. Kakyoin said that the mirror world doesn't exist. It's like, if you have to think about the context of the situation... Also, a like, dream world doesn't exist, but we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, you have to think about the context, like... Kakyoin does not have, like, you uh, omnipotent knowledge, or, sorry, uh, what is omniscient knowledge of every stand. Of course there's going to be a stand a few parts later that defies what he could understand. Yeah. It's just a funny <laughs> meme joke, I know. Stands have literally, like, expanded or evolved so much through, like, all the parts that came, af- that came after this, like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> like, I think we went over the last episode when you talked about the rules of the stands, like, of how much, like, those have been broken... Or, like, yeah. changed, like... <laughs> it's true. It's very true. So, anything else? Cause it's... No. Think Let's wrap good? this up. All right. So, again, thank you so much for listening. Um, find us for these tummies hiccups from uh, Discord alone. Um, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, follow wherever <laughs> wherever you listen to podcasts at. We have our party discussions on and other videos, including like Hunter Hunter and stuff like that. And follow the podcast on Twitter and each of us separately. We have the links in them in the video. And am I forget anything? You want to plug anything? Uh, no. No. All right. L- yeah. Listen to uh, our party oh. podcast. Oh, we one did, more thing. Uh... If you haven't joined a Discord, join. Hell yeah! Yeah, we have mm. a Discord. We have a uh, party podcast. We have uh, recently we just did a one K Q and A. Yes. Uh, so check that one out. That was fun. We have Hunter uh, Hunter video. We have a Doctor Stone video. We do have a Doctor Stone video. And uh, I think that's it. I think we plugged everything. Yeah, we plugged it all up. I What's mean, I'm sure part? we're forgetting something. But what's the next arc? I the next arc is the Empress. Okay. So join us next uh, week uh, when we talk about Maybe. the Empress, <laughs> uh, which is uh, chapters 33 through 36. That's a lot easier. Yeah.
<laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>